Okay, so here in Final Cut Pro, we're going to have a look at how we can transport a proxy version of, of our edit. So we're going to run through a few different steps here. Um, first of all, we're going to have a look at the import settings um, in Final Cut Pro. We're going to bring in a few different clips um, into a new project and then look at how we can make a copy of that project that is only using the proxy footage. Now, the advantage of this is that proxy will work well when you're editing on a laptop um, or a slower computer. Um, and it will enable you to transport a project on your own laptop or to more quickly upload it and share it with other editors um, through sites like Dropbox. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we're going to set this up in Final Cut Pro. So the first thing we're going to do is create a brand new project library. So if we go to File and New Library, okay, we're going to save um, our project library in this folder um, that we have set up here. And we're going to call this Proxy footage overview. So we have a brand new blank project, okay, and we're going to import some footage um, into this project. Now before we do that, I just want to run through a couple of the preferences, the import preferences that we have set up in Final Cut Pro 10. So if we go to Final Cut Pro preferences and just have a look um, at the import settings that we have across here towards the right. So basically um, these are important for creating the proxy footage or creating optimized media when you're bringing files into to Final Cut Pro. So this first setting, if you're managing media yourself um, and you have it stored in your own filing system in Final Cut Pro, you can normally leave your project files in place. Okay. Now it's a good idea to copy your files to the storage library if you're importing them off an SD card and certainly you can run into problems when you're exporting projects at a later stage um, if you grab files straight from an SD card or from a camera without importing them or making a copy um, into the Final Cut Pro project. How you set the next settings down here will depend on your system. So if you're wanting to work with optimized media, um, which is basically an Apple ProRes version of your footage, um, then you can check this box. Um, but if you're working on a slower computer, which is the, the purpose of this tutorial, then you'll want to check this Create Proxy Media option. Okay. Now we can do this once we've brought files in. So if you have an older project where you want to begin to work in proxy media, you can do that at a later stage. Okay. We're going to skip over the, the keywords options here. We don't need to worry about that. And we don't need to worry about the analysis for audio or video problems in this particular example. Okay. So these are the key things. So we're going to copy our files to the library and we're going to transcode it um, to a proxy format. Okay. So let's go ahead now and bring some files into our project here. So we're going to jump to a folder on the desktop. And when we bring some files in here, we just got some QuickTime movie files here that are actually in 1280 by 720. Okay. When we bring files in and drag them across, it will respect those, those import settings that we've set up in the preferences in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to pull these across into this event. Okay. And it's going to copy those files. Now, because I had those different settings um, set here, it's basically going to begin to copy those files and then transcode them into that proxy format. So it looks like that's all done. These are some relatively short clips that we have here. Okay. So basically now if we come up to our viewer, we want to check that we've got things in proxy set up. We can go to the view option here and change to proxy and these files are all now working in the proxy format. So what the proxy format does, if we right click on our library here and go to reveal in finder. Okay. And we're going to have a look inside this Final Cut Pro project library. Okay. So we're going to right click here and go to show package contents. And this is a really useful thing to familiarize yourself with as you work on more and more projects. And there are certainly some apps out there that will manage your libraries for you. I'm kind of hands on and I like to go in there and know which files I'm moving around and what I'm deleting. So I prefer to kind of do this manually. So I'm going to click here and you'll see we've got our original media, which has been copied into this project file. We've got any render files. So if we had a project timeline, we'd added effects. We might have render files located in here. And then we have our transcoded media, which is the proxy media, which is an exact replica of those files. Okay. Except transcoded in a lower quality version um, than the original. Okay. So to basically play back as a, as a lower quality version. So when we do an edit in proxy, the quality will be a bit more pixelated, a bit grainier, and um, we'll basically gain because our editing flow will be a bit quicker, um, particularly on slower or laptop computers. Okay. So what we want to do is look at how we can transport a version of this project with only the, the proxy or transcoded media in that project. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. Okay. So we can see this proxy footage overview 
project. Okay, and I'm going to jump into Final Cut Pro and just right click and close this library. Okay, so we can make a, a kind of carbon copy um, of a library, and we're going to do it in the same location here, but you could be copying to an external hard drive. Okay, so I'm going to right click here and go to duplicate, okay, which is going to make a perfect copy um, of that project. Okay, and this is how we can kind of quickly copy projects. Okay, and I'm just going to call this proxy only. Okay, I'm going to jump into this project. So the important thing here is I'm working on a copy of the project. I'm not working on the original. It's always important to make sure you uh, manage your files carefully. So we're going to go in and show the package contents and then we're going to delete the original media uh, from this project. So I'm going to do command and backspace or drag these files to the trash and then I'm going to come down and empty my trash. So I've now got a project here this proxy only project, which is a copy of this project. Okay, so let's have a look at the file size of these. So the original project file is 169 megabytes, and the copy of that file is only 85 megabytes. So it's just around about half the size of that original project. Okay, so we're saving a lot of space there. Um, if we want to transport this file, if we want to upload it, it's uh, half the size for doing that. Okay, and now if we double click and open it, okay, then we can see. Um, we have our proxy footage um, is still completely visible. Okay, we can edit with that. Okay, if we go back to our optimized or original um, footage, okay, then you can see these clips are offline. Okay, so basically we're working now in a project where only our proxy footage is available. Okay, now the great thing about this is that we can edit our proxy timeline. Um, so if we create a brand new project here. Okay, we'll call this proxy timeline. We can drag all these proxy clips down there. Okay, if we jump back to optimized, um, then we're going to lose our timeline. It's not going to show up. It's going to say we're missing the, the original files. Um, but when we've worked on this, when we've made our edits, um, when we've begun to kind of manipulate our, our clips and everything like that, the edits are all good. So all we need to do once we've completed a project is put back into place our original media. Okay, so I'm just going to close this proxy only project. Okay, I'm going to come back in here. So this file um, is still small, 85.6 megabytes. Okay, I'm going to jump back into my original proxy file and just grab the original media. So I just do a straight command and C or edit and copy. Okay, and then I'll jump back up so I can see my proxy only project. I'm going to go in and show package contents. Okay, and now we can jump into this uh, event. Okay, I'm going to paste back in the original media. That's back in place now. Okay, so if I jump back to the proxy only file, you can see the size has jumped back up again, and if I double click and open it up, I can now flick back between optimized and original and proxy, okay? So I've regained the ability to playback export in the original format, okay? So that's how we can flip between a proxy timeline, and so for transportation, for uploading and sharing a project, um, and for, for editing with and then pull back in our original media and this will be good now um, to export if we needed to um, in that original format. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Working with proxy footage is a really great way to work and also becoming familiar with the way in which Final Cut Pro manages its libraries, the files that it's making for proxy format, for the proxy format for the optimized or the original format when you're importing and working with those files. Okay, what this does mean is that if you're managing your, your media um, on a separate drive or something like that, but you're rendering your proxy footage um, into your library, then you can make a copy of that library, take it away, work with it on a laptop, bring it back. Um, obviously, you need to work with it in proxy mode, but you can then bring it back and switch it back to original or optimized, and the clips will instantly reconnect. So these Final Cut Pro libraries are, are really portable um, in that way, really flexible uh, once you kind of understand what's inside those project files.
okay proxy footage is also something you can clean up when you've finished a project as well so if you want to save space on a drive you can delete from within um, your final cut pro library okay everything except for the original media okay so we could delete the original media if we'd transcoded optimized media as well because we could use that for our export but generally um, proxy media proxy media folder that's within the library and the render files are files that you can delete knowing that as long as you've not moved any other files you can always recreate them okay so they're great files to delete when you're archiving um, a project i hope that's been useful um, and i look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial